Hello, I'm Paul Ndiho. This week on the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel, a booming taxi business in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. And later on, we'll take you to Lagos, where a Nigerian firm, Spark, is helping build internet startups. Every week, we strive to bring you stories that inspire, empower, engage, and motivate young African innovators using new technology into action. Now, when it comes to doing businesses, there are places where you pause and say, wow, can I succeed? Well, there are a few places worse, it seems, than the likes of Myanmar and Somalia. That's what, at least according to the World Bank, Analysts say that Somalia has gone through a lot of political strife. More often than not, uh, businessmen are advised to be very cautious uh, if they want to invest in and start a small business in Somalia. But times have changed. Uh, the scene of the daily running battles, the once uh, deserted streets of Somalia, are now bustling with traffic. Not too long ago, you'd only see tanks and heavily armed uh, convoys running down the streets. Today, they are taxis. Yes, I said taxis. You know why? Because that image is beginning to change and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Businesses have begun to sprout across the city and a new tax service is among the many businesses that are cropping up across the country. A new organized taxi company in Mogadishu is generating a buzz. The company is revamping the old transportation sector on roads that were once considered the most dangerous in the world. Once the deserted streets are now bustling with traffic as the country rebuilds its devastated economy after nearly two decades of civil war. The Mogadishu taxi company has been operating for three months and it is the first taxi service to bring yellow cabs to the city. After the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab was driven out by a military offensive led by a UN-backed African Union peacekeeping force, Suleiman Mohammed Derasa and his partners introduced the branded yellow and blue taxis and charged their clients one US dollar per kilometer. We started with 25 cars and we've been working for three months. Taxis in Mogadishu used to charge a lot of money. For example, when we pick up a passenger from the Bakara market and take them to the airport, we charge them between six and seven dollars, whereas they used to pay up to thirty dollars. Clients are calling to the station on their mobile phones and a taxi is dispatched to their location. The taxis are not only is the crowded streets, but they also add color to the city. The cab service is also a source of employment for the country's young people. Wiping off the dust of his taxi, Muhammad is a former member of one of the many militia groups that once controlled parts of Mogadishu. He traded in his weapons for new wheels. We all come from different backgrounds. Some have come from different countries, and they used to be taxi drivers there. Now, they've come back to practice their skills here. This company has enabled many youth who were not doing much to engage in gainful employment. If all the youth were employed, there wouldn't be problems in this country. A majority of the drivers at the Mogadishu tax company are young men who either own cars or are renting them on a daily basis. They pay the company 25 US dollars per day and whatever they make on top is theirs to keep. Across the city, other taxi companies can now be seen working the streets funded mostly by money from the diaspora. Suleiman and his partners, however, say they are not threatened and believe a competition is good for their business. 
Competition is crucial for any business. We welcome all other alternative ideas. They are our colleagues, and they have affirmed our business models, and we welcome this. We don't see it as a challenge. As Somalia rebuilds, uh, only just 10 percent of its roads are paved, while 95 percent of the country's 10 million people have no electricity. Mushrooming construction sites, uh, solar-powered street lamps, and beachfront cafes are pointed to a slight rebound, a bleat one largely confined to the city. Despite uh, Somalia's improving uh, business development, uh, risks remain high. Al-Shabaab's suicide bombers have been able to attack sites in Mogadishu with an alarming ease and AU peacekeepers still patrol the streets in Mogadishu in armored vehicles. Coming up, a Nigerian firm is investing millions of dollars in new internet-based startups. Stay tuned. We'll take a short break, but before we go, we want to know what you think about the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Twitter and Facebook. The address is Africa Innovations and Technology. You can also check us out at our website at www.africainnovations.net. Welcome back to the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel, a show where we strive to bring you stories that inspire, empower, engage, and motivate young African innovators using new technology into action. This week, we are talking about a taxi business in Somalia and how a Nigerian internet-based company is helping other startups in the West African nation to grow their business. High-speed internet revolution has positioned Africa as the fastest growing continent on Earth for internet startups, and with it has come a significant shift. Recognition among African governments and people that an opportunity exists to leapfrogging to development gap through the implementation of technological solutions to some of the challenges facing the continent. The internet usage have preceded and in many ways have caused an explosion in the number of people using the internet as a tool to communicate and do business. In Lagos, Nigeria, Spark, an internet-based business firm, is generating a buzz. The firm is investing millions of dollars in development of aspiring Nigerian tech and internet startups. The arrival of the fiber optic cables in West Africa has brought promises and expectations of a faster, more reliable internet service. Nigeria has West Africa's largest economy and internet connectivity is spurring growth in the nation of more than 160 million people. Spark is funding Nigerian entrepreneurs who have unique ideas but little resources. With a million dollars at Investor Spark's co-founder Bastin Gota says the company will help tech entrepreneurs get started in Nigeria's tough business environment. Spark was established because there was an opportunity. It was also established because we thought there was a lack of people exploiting that opportunity. So there was a, a lot of young entrepreneurs who were trying, but uh, Nigeria is not an easy place to do business. Yeah, it's it's difficult to establish a company, talk to CAC, it takes three months, opening a bank account, running a gen, getting an internet connection, uh, paying two years up front on your rent. Like, all that stuff is, is not very easy. Spark was created by web entrepreneur Basti Gota and Jason Njuku, the founder of Iroko TV, a multi-million dollar web distribution platform for Nollywood films. And his wife, Nigerian actress Mary Remy Njuku, 
the company was established in February 2013 with an initial investment of 2.5 million US dollars. And so far, Spark has been able to successfully fund 10 companies. Spark will put some money to work, we'll find great young entrepreneurs, and we will, we will fund them uh, with money to explore the opportunities that the internet is, is giving us. One of those companies funded by Spark include Kulia Games are designed to appeal to the Nigerian audience. Kulia initially received $250,000 from Iroko TV and then was integrated into Spark when the investor began operations. The chief executive officer for Kulia says that being part of Spark has helped the company put innovation in a business perspective that had been lacking. Before. We have become a bit more focused in terms of uh, what we want to achieve. There is now a clear focus on revenue generation, which is what Spark has been able to help us align. Uh, you know, um, the important thing for them is to be able to generate funds uh, from whatever business that is under Spark. So, as an investor, uh, or sorry, as a, as a CEO, um, you are told to focus on how to generate revenue as against just innovating for the sake of innovation. Another Spark beneficiary is Hotels NG, a company that provides a platform for customers to make hotel bookings online. Hotels NG works with more than 4,000 hotels across Nigeria, and they receive a commission for each booking made through its website. In the space of three months, we have grown from basically one employee to 20. Uh, uh, the number of bookings that we have done has tripled. Our site traffic has more than tripled. Um, so basically, there's a lot has changed. Some analysts say Nigeria's e-commerce industry is young but growing rapidly, with millions of dollars already invested by venture capitalists. If you see the level of competition at play, even in the e-commerce sphere, what with Jumia, Kunga, and all of the people just coming on board right now, that industry, you know, will, will not be worth less than a billion dollars as we speak. Sparks founders are planning to invest in at least 10 more companies and hope that within five years, the startups they have funded that will be able to make enough profit to generate returns on their investment. Well, on that note, do you think that you have a better idea? Or you have created something that everyone is talking about and you'd like to be featured on this show? Please send us your video clips and tell us which country you're from and how your innovation is impacting your community. That's our show today. Be sure to watch the Africa Innovation and Technology channel online every weekend and on our website at www.africainnovations.net. Thanks for watching. <music>